G'day. In this set of video tutorials, we're actually going to be looking at making a horror-style game. Um, it's not going to be a complete horror game because there'll be some definite design flaws along the way, um, but it's generally what we're going to go for. Um, if you're familiar with Slender or any game like that, that's the game we're going to be aiming for. Um, so to do this, we can actually go through to File, New Project. Now, the reason why I need to create a new project is to make sure that none of our old files are left over from our previous game. In this case, that's a car racing game that we had. So to select a new folder, I can just go Browse. And I'm actually going to call it, save it under a folder of Unity Projects, Game Design Tutorials, and create a new folder called Game 3, and I'm going to call it Horrorish. So if I open that up, you can see that that's an empty folder that I've pre-prepared, and Game 3 Horrorish. If I select the folder, that's where my game is going to be saved, all those little files that I need. We don't need any packages to be imported straight away. I'll explain them as we use them, as I import them, because you can actually import these at a later date. Hit Create. If you get presented with this, if you've made changes to your current game that you had open, just click Save. In one case, I don't, so I'm just going to hit Don't Save, just to avoid confusion at a later date. Now, from there, what you'll actually see is the Unity has now reopened. And it looks very, very empty. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a basic terrain. We're going to be having our horror person walk around on that ground. Now, if you've played with terrain before, um, it has had a separate tab in the past. It has gone down, down into the game object, create other, and you can see that terrain has now been added into that menu. So click terrain, and that will create for us in our hierarchy view, a terrain. Now, Assets folder, it will create a basic new terrain, which is where the data will be stored. And you can see that that is a very big file, a very big plane that you can see there. So just moving around, it's very, very flat. So what can we do from here? Well, the very first thing is we have a couple of different tools in our terrain tool interface. So the very first one is the raise and lower terrain. And if you click on it, you'll get a description and tells you how to use it. So click to raise, yep, and hold sh down shift to lower. So hold down shift and then click and it will lower those. So that's actually raising terrain. The next one is paint height. So if I actually pick a specific height that I want, and let's also use the brushes. The brushes actually paint to a different thing. So let's just use a larger circle. It paints, and we'll stop if I actually move out a bit. it will paint to that height. Now, you can see that that's actually very slow going. So the way to play with those values is your brush size. Your brush size is obviously just going to increase the size of your brush. And the second one is opacity, is how fast it occurs. So if I have opacity at 100%, it's going to happen almost instantly. But if I don't want it to be that quick, I turn my opacity all the way down. You can see that it's starting to go, but it's going to take me a lot longer just by clicking and holding that one down is what I'm doing, but it will eventually get there. But you'll see it stops and plateaus at there, and that's what this paint height tool does. The next one is smooth height. Now, you can actually come along. I'm going to turn my opacity up so you can see what happens. Smoothing just smooths out the edges, and this can be useful. Just smooth it out to make it look nice and smooth. The next one is paint a texture, and we'll come back to those last three, so paint texture, place trees, and paint details. Um, but the last one we're actually going to do is we're actually going to go to our terrain settings and just decrease the size. Now, if we keep our size as it is, it is a very big map and it will take us forever. Again, this is just a proof of concept game. Um, you guys can create your own large terrains when you're not actually in class. But what we can do is we can actually go along and just go through on terrain width. Let's change that to, let's say, a thousand. The train length can be a thousand. And the terrain height is how tall it is. I actually think for our game, 200 should be enough. Um, so what you'll actually find is if I got my just raising tool, increase the opacity, you'll find that it will eventually get to a point where it plateaus. Now. The reason why it plateaus there is that is the highest that this height map can go. If I was to change this terrain height to be 300, then that would actually be allowed to go higher. 
the height map resolution, detail resolution, and detail resolution per patch is just how detailed it is and how much uh, saving it will put save for optimization. We won't go too much into depth on that during our course. Um, and same with the control texture resolution and base texture resolution, we don't do that. So that's the very first thing. So you guys have used these tools before. And if you haven't, you can see that there is very basic of raise them up and lower or higher. So just to create a basic one, we can create something like that very, very quickly. And you can see just by clicking the different tools, you actually get different shapes to go through. So in case that's a star, a whole heap of little dots. And you can see how it could make a realistic terrain. If you wanted to, raise and lower terrain, you could even come along and create, if I decrease the brush size, you could even come in and create a little bit of a pond inside a, a mountain range. So you can see that, that how that's gone through. Okay, now if it was happening too fast, you just change the opacity again. Now that one could take us a while, so now that we've done that, that's going to be my basic terrain. Um, I'm not quite happy with it at the moment, so I'm actually going to create, import a package. And the package I'm going to use is if you go to your asset store, And once your asset store loads, Unity has actually uh, given us a asset that's for free. It's called Terrain Assets. So just do a quick search for that. And when you find it, it's usually this one here with this icon. You can see that it is free. There's a lot of people that have used it. And it's a very good starter pack for you to go through. So you'll see that it's got a lot of different bushes, etc inside it. But the thing that I'm really after are these textures. And they're what we really want to put in our game. So we could actually go through and use this a couple of different ways. You can just go import or download and import. I'm just going to import that there. If you don't have access to the Unity Asset Store, there is a file that I'll be providing you. So import And again, like any package that you import, it does take time depending on the speed of your computer that you're on. So you can see that it's relatively fast on the machine that I'm using. Uh, but if you're on a slower machine, what's the best thing to do is to actually go and find something else to do. So if you actually have a Word document or something to type up in relation to the class, feel free to go and do that. Um, if, however, you're lucky enough to be on a good computer, you would have actually noticed that it would have happened extremely quickly, and we now have all these terrain assets. So we don't just go through and place them on the scene like other objects, we're actually going to use our terrain tools. And to do that, we have a paintbrush, and what we need to do is we need to actually add the texture. So under textures, you see no terrain textures defined. So if I go to edit textures on the right, go add texture, what I'll be able to do is I'll get a little window to select my terrain texture. And to do that, under texture, I'll see select, and it'll give me all these options. Now, the good thing to make sure that you're doing is pick one that is designed for texturing, because if you pick something like grass and rock, that would work out quite well. Now, if you pick something like fern, it has a lot of transparency that we put in place that will make it not that great. So to start off with, let's start off with some, some grass and rock. Click add. Now the very first terrain you add will be applied to the entire terrain, so it will no longer be grey. However, if I go and add another texture, in this case we'll add a cliff, we can actually select that second texture and go along and paint it. Now I'm going to just change the opacity to really speed this up a bit. And the target strength is how strong it will be, so I'm just going to paint the whole thing in that particular section, and you can see how that's being painted over the top. So I'm just going to put my mountain range along here. Now you guys can spend a little bit more time doing it than what I'm doing. And I'm going to add one more to this. I'm actually going to add the snow. And what you'll see, so if I go through, 
Now, the thing with the snow is I don't want it to be completely solid at the very top, so I'm just going to give a very nice light spray covering. And then I'm going to increase the target strength, reduce my brush size, and just kind of polish up the top bits a bit to make it look a little bit thicker along the top. And what that does is that allows us to actually get this definition of there's a little bit of snow on there um, over the top of the cliff face. So you can actually see how that works. All right. The very next thing is, is to add trees. Now, if I want to place a tree, go to my tree, place trees, edit trees. It's the same way as textures. And to actually bring up the tree, click on the little dot and that brings up our game object to be selected. So what I'm going to do is let's just pick some Scott's Pines go add and you'll now see I've got a tree to place and that works the same way as you can place them in groups you can also come in and add grass I'm just going to add a grass texture and let's pick let's just go grass go add and if I hold down the right mouse button and zoom in with W A S and D I can actually come in and place grass down on it. Now obviously it doesn't make too much sense that I've got green grass growing in amongst the snow. You can actually see that going through. Now you will see one thing is if I zoom out you can see that that you can't see it quite well there so I'll use this black spot out here. If I paint like this you can see some of it being painted but as soon as my brush goes too far away, you can't see it being painted at all. The reason for this is Unity's way of doing things. It is being painted, it's just not being displayed to you. So if I actually go through and just see that mound there, I'm going to paint that edge, zoom out, and then you will see it appear there. So just be careful when you're painting with it because you don't want to fill up your entire scene with grass that you just can't see and it still is running. Um, again, you can still use the different paint tools to get different pattern effects. And that gives that randomness of it to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, however, we're going to take it one further step. Our basic terrain here can take quite a while to develop like this. So I'm going to speed up the process using Photoshop and I'm going to show you that how to do that in the next video.